a second, ladies and gentlemen. So bear with us now. Exciting times, of course, to get see the reveal here of uh, some high-level Overwatch 2 gameplay, Matthew. It's going to be Rome, the push map, to start us off. Yeah, so push is obviously a new game mode uh, for Overwatch in Overwatch 2. Uh, it's really kind of like a neutral objective where you have the robot here. Uh, he'll push the barricades depending on who controls uh, the objective back and forth. Uh, what's really great about this is obviously that there's uh, you know not many scenarios you can tie. It's also one of the game modes uh, that you kind of find where there's not uh, there's not really kind of an offense and defense like a hard offense or defense on either side. Uh, you're looking at you know just playing just a kind of completely uh, variable map where sometimes you're on defense, sometimes you're on offense. A lot of just flow to it. Absolutely. Uh, and look, and Space said there's a lot of fighting. It felt like there was a ton yeah. of skirmishes uh, going on. A lot of back and forth stuff here. It's got to be five versus five, of course. Uh, and we already get to see some of these locks to start things off. We're going to see Bastion straight off the bat, which is great. Also Sombra. So both these two new look heroes with their reworks are going to be coming out the gates. Well, also a reminder that there's some of the other changes that were in the PvP stream that are in here as well, right? Reinhardt, when he charges, can kind of control and maneuver himself. You he got that power steering, baby. Yeah, space coming out of the spot, right? I know, being able to get right towards that choke and the uh, double fire strike. So some changes there with Reinhardt uh, as we get to the mix. So uh, this is a pretty deadly area of the map, right? A large, long corridor. It's something we usually like don't really have like a lot in Overwatch 1, these like massive, oh, long, drawn out sight lines. There it is, Bastion on the move. Unreal. <laughs> we see the uh, biotic grenade thrown in there by Shu. But I mean, the fact that you can move around and have that Gatling gun potential. Now also the primary fire. It, okay, it, it's it like is a bit different. Yeah. Bursts, right? Yeah, it, it's it's uh it's really good in like long range scenarios. We see here from I know Kebster's POV Sombra, right? Uh, used in much more of like an offensive way. Uh, space gets hacked, but you see how fast the abilities come oh! back online in a nice pin there to take out closer. Okay, space is dirty. Look at the maneuverability that he has for such a short range charge. He can still connect. So this means that Team One are on the road. They're pushing here, and uh, obviously. Two, I think TWO is, uh, is our name for, for the robot here. Yeah, so you can see at uh, the top of the screen, right? Uh, now the blue team is in the lead right now, pushing that robot. When the red team gets control of it, it'll kind of move faster back towards the middle. It's really tied to the team's barricade more than anything, is uh, birdering here on the junk rat on the flank. And again, we see a lot of people getting hacked by this Sombra right there, but it's, it's for a brief time that their abilities are unavailable. We saw this one in the preview, I think, and yeah, space is getting a little bit, uh, a little bit nutty with it. Getting right into the face there of Mag, and even as an Earth Shadow to spend here. Now, these ultimates don't come as easy, right? You're not getting no. nearly as much ult charge from, from damaging tanks. It, well, yes, and I also think one thing you do realize right away is how much more offensive the tanks are, right? Uh, where Space is able to get right up uh, in, in that area and see Mag there. It's interrupted, and he actually tries to go for a Shatter, but it's going to be an EMP from Decay on the other side. Bird Ring on the Genji, by the way. Nasty stuff. Assassin's already picked off while Mag sleeps it off, and that's the EMP coming out. But Bird Ring still has, obviously, the use of the dash so soon after the EMP hits. Trying to deal with the aggression from Moth here in Valkyrie. Yeah, you kind of think of EMP now, right? As like a, a large one second interrupt. And then it's really about Sombra getting the damage benefit after that. Plus that percent actually, health damage as well, right? Yes, and trying to actually finish players off. Uh, so you see that's a nice hack here uh, onto Moth. As uh, uh, he'll, he'll end up falling. So Assassin does have this uh, Bastion ult. We'll see if uh, he's able to get a good use of it. Uh, as on the other side, uh, you also see it's going to be Mag with a Shatter. You see in between the barricades, T the barricade, excuse me, TWO moves quite quickly. So yeah. it didn't take long after winning the fight for Team 2 to be back in control of the objective. And now they're starting to move their barricade up. <laughs> look, look at this. My... He's going to it. Yeah, he's not ready. The hydraulics are just too insane. Mag finds the Shatter, knocks space on down, looks for Assassin who's sleeping and Birdering's going to go for the blade here. That's one, that's two. And almost getting, what, 50% of it, 40% of an entire team with one blade is pretty nice. Yeah, and I think you can see just how, you know, uh, obviously Overwatch, a very fast-paced game, but in 5v5, just the aggression and fast pace you can play at. And I think it's a great point, right? Now, we're used to, like, two kills with a dragon blade. Oh, here we go. A, a fight being for a very long time. Here's the Bash, you know. Uh, Enemy be, cruise missile on route. <laughs> three spots down here. You see Mag takes a decent amount of that splash damage. Jeff was talking about it earlier, but able to get healed up pretty quick. We have a Zarya here though for space. Bear in mind, Zarya has two bubbles. She can bubble herself twice or a teammate twice, and that shield of Mag just disappears. EMP gets thrown in there. Moth is awfully low as Skew goes for that little sleep dart. See, Assassin is super low, and Skew's showing us a little bit of that Ana. Very nice. 
as he's able to keep everybody charged up. And uh, you see one of the ticks on the top of the screen as uh, the red team is approaching it. Uh, that's going to be a bit of a checkpoint there uh, for push. So that'll give them a little bit of a forward spawn, Changes obviously. Spawn location. Yeah, yeah. It, it would be kind of crazy if they had to spawn all the way in the back, you know, to try and get the, the objective uh, at this point. Uh, also, just to remind people, this is a different version of Zarya. Zarya has the two bubbles on a shared cooldown. The Reaper guy goes in. The sound of the Hellfire shotguns as well, it yeah. rattles, right? Especially in that underpass. It, it's something that Space talked about, right? Uh, you know, graphically, obviously, you know, the new hero looks for a lot of the different heroes uh, in this build. But then also just the, the weapon sounds. It's one of the things where uh, I think speaking to some of the players who have had some hands on, they're like, man, the, the damage just feels so strong. And I think it's because you know, the, there's the... the the sounds of the guns and everything just feel so much more like violent, right? It feels really like more real, I think, than kind of like Overwatch. One. Matt, I noticed the sound playing when one of your teammates is eliminated, like yep. what we hear in Knockout Elimination or Lockout, excuse me. Look at the EMP, look at the percent health damage on Mag. He gets blown to smithereens by Kev's to after with the damage increase. Yeah, and it just makes Sombra like an offensive powerhouse, right? You kind of look at players who play Sombra now, uh, really just trying to play more of a team oriented game. Uh, now it is just way more of kind of almost like playing a little bit of a tracer version. So the blue team going to get up, get towards this barrier. You can see now they take the lead at the top of the screen. They yep. are in charge. That yellow line represents the enemy team's sort of furthest progress. So they can tell when they've sort of gotten ahead. Enemy forward spawn changed there. So with that checkpoint now, that changes obviously uh, where the leading team come from. Yeah, yeah, this is scary. That's one. That's two. <laughs> God, the time to kill feels lower. I mean, Burning is attacking non-tanks, to be fair, but space, space also was the first to fall there. <laughs> Moth, Moth had the rally, but he didn't have it for much longer as Nanoblade, regardless, you know, 6v6, 3v3, 5v5, whatever you want to play, uh, still so impactful as uh, Space now. See if he can get charged up on this Zarya. Going to have like a Death Blossom plus Grav combination. Right, TWO is pretty much sat in the middle of the map for the time being, but Team 1 lead with under two minutes now left. There's the grab. Pretty nice cleanup. Easier for Space to get a ton of charge individually now. He can be self-sustaining. You, you can hear the B, man, with the Nano. It just sounds so filthy. That'll be a team wipe here uh, for the blue team as they are still in the lead, just trying to get the barricade even further, right, forward their progress, make it even harder for the red team to come back. Is some more changes here uh, for the red team, as I'm sure a lot of these players experimented throughout this. Is Birdring now over to the Reaper. Mag on the Diva. So I know a lot of uh, you know, players, just even of the tank role in general, were a little bit kind of uh, worried, they think, about Diva in solo play. But she's so good as like a duelist, like 1v1, that she's able to really I mean, be uh, pretty pretty strong. And we definitely already knew that, right? That was something yeah. that she showcased uh, you know, in Overwatch for quite some time. Birdring, I mean, this is a much more familiar pick for him. Nasty stuff as space there gets kind of blown up again. It was mentioned, I think space said that tanks feel like sort of bigger DPSs. They also fall just as quickly in some cases now. Well, I, I think you can also see how like speed and just uh, verticality is going to end up playing, right? Where you know, Mag is able to get in a position, make a play, but then also oh! use the defense matrix. That is a nice sleep. Oh, he's dead. Oh, he's dead. Uh, <laughs> that is a nice sleep from Skewed. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure he'll want that one for the highlight reel, is it? Looks like the blue team actually going to try and wrap through the middle of the map. So that's one thing with the objective being really like a neutral objective is there's a lot of areas to play in the middle of the map that you can just, you don't have to circumvent to go play for a, you know, static right. objective, like a control or something like that. There's so many different routes you can take because obviously the robot will take long to get back to the barricade. You can take numerous fights in different areas. There's a sense where you don't necessarily always want to fight around no, where TWO I, is, yeah, you right? I think so. So right? these fights are being taken uh, externally to where so, the robot is. So we're also getting very close to overtime. Seven seconds on the le uh, uh, left. Overtime will trigger because the red team is behind right now right. with the blue team in the lead. They'll have an opportunity as long as they control this to keep moving the robot forward. Right, and so there on the score, you can actually see where Team 2 need to get to to win the round. You can't draw this really at all, right? Unless TWO never moves, so I guess that is one situation. It'd but be difficult, and you'd jinx us if it, if it did. EMP for three. TWO just hanging out, just hanging off the barricade. Death Blossom here by Birdring to try and clear some space. Team Tool are moving for the time being, and they're using that to break line of sight, right? Using TWO and the barricade to avoid the damage, but damn, Team 1 got back awfully quick. Yeah, the barricade gives you a little bit of a space there to be able to move up, almost a little bit like cover, to get in position, and it's going to be the blue team wiping the red team off of 